Okay, now I'm doing example 14.2 on page 466. A chemist runs this experiment. Um, 2ICL plus H2 turns into I squared or I2 plus 2HCl. So um, we want to know what the rate is. And they gave you this really cool table um, about the different trials that they did. Now remember, whenever you run a trial, you can only compare one thing that changes. That's a very important thing to remember. So when I'm comparing trials, I have to make sure only one thing changes. So that the change is, the change that I see is only due to the one thing that I'm watching. Does that make sense? So it says use this information to determine the rate for this reaction. So first we need to see um, what the, what these exponents are. Do you remember? Um, the rate of an equation, <clears throat> the rate equals uh, this, it's a small k, it's the rate constant times the concentration of this ICL to some exponent times the concentration of this to some exponent. So we're going to figure out what those exponents are. So what we need to do is we need to look at the trials and see what happened to the rate when we um, change the concentration of these um, chemicals? So if I look at one and two, my concentration of ICL didn't change, but my concentration of H2 did. It got twice as strong. So this doubled. So what happened to the rate? Because the rate increase would be due to the higher concentration of the S of the hydrogen gas. So when this doesn't change and the hydrogen gas did change, my rate also doubled. So when this doubles, my rate doubles. So this doesn't change at all. So if your concentration doubles and your rate doubles, that makes your exponent to be a one. So that means this exponent here is one. When my concentration doubles and rate doubles, your exponent is a one. So let's look now when the concentration of this doubles and this doesn't change. So now the change in my, my rate is going to be due to the increased concentration of the ICO. So again, you have to look at, you can't do these two, this doubles here, but this also doubles. So then you don't know if the rate changes because of this increased concentration or this. So you need to only have one thing change. So the hardest thing here is to pitch, pick which, which trials you're gonna look at. So when this one doubles, this does not change. What happens to my rate? It goes from 0 0.0204 to 0 0.0408. So that doubles too. So again, when my concentration doubles and my rate doubles, my exponent is going to be a one. So it, does it always happen that way? No. Sometimes my concentration will double and my rate will go four times. So then my exponent is gonna be a two. Sometimes my concentration will double and my rate will not have a change. Then my exponent is zero. That means no matter how much of the chemical I put in, it's not gonna change my rate. I can put as much in as I want and it doesn't change my rate. So your exponents are really gonna be one or two or zero. So if your, rate, if your concentration doubles and your rate doubles, your exponent here is a one. If your concentration doubles and your rate quadruples, your exponent is gonna be a two. And if your concentration doubles, but your rate doesn't change, your exponent is a zero. So let's continue doing this. So now we know our exponents. So now, once I know my exponents, I'm gonna fi figure out what my k is. So how I do that is I pick one of my trials. Doesn't matter which one, but I just need to pick one. And I put those numbers in to this. So let's, um, 
Let's just see which ones they picked. They picked point 102. So they picked the first trial. So in the first trial, my concentration of ICL is 0.25 my unit is molar, M. And H2, my concentration is 0.25 my unit is molar. And my rate is 0 0.102 and it's M over second. That's a zero. So now I have to just solve for my K. So I can do that and, you know, uh, I would maybe multiply these together and then divide this by that, but really what I'm doing is doing 0.25 molar times 0.25 molar. Let me read. 0.25. So that cancels out, so I get my K all by itself. So if you get your little handy dandy calculator out, you should get that your K, in here you have an M on the top, you have an M on the bottom, you have an S on the bottom, and you have an M on the bottom. These units will change all the time, so you need to make sure you write all your units in because it won't always be the same thing. Um, because it depends on what your exponent is for here. So my K equals um, 0 0.161 over M second. M times S. That's an MS. So it's molar per second. So now I have my K, then I go back to what it was. My rate equals K times the concentration of ICL to the 1 times the concentration of H2 to the 1. And I put in this for my rate constant. So I would put, let's move this over, rate, oh, equals um, 0 0.161 over molar second. And that is my rate. So after I, after I do, um, after I figure out what this is, I can figure out what my rate is. So I can now put any concentration into these and I should figure out what my rate is as long as I know what the next concentrations is. Um, so I should reread the question. Um, okay. Yeah, so it says now if the chemist wanted to run a fourth trial and change the concentration of this and change the concentration of this, they would just have, they wouldn't actually even have to run the trial, they could just put those concentrations in and calculate the rate. So once they figure out what the rate constant is, then they don't have to run as many trials. So um, then they put some in, but we'll skip that one.